On Monday, the NASA Guardian carried as its top story a report featuring the thoughts of former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram concerning the government's ongoing discussions with the developers of Bahamar on its share of the property's roadworks. Mr. Ingram criticized the government's position that the roadwork is worth much less than the $118 million the resort developers are claiming and that the final cost would have to be negotiated or decided by an arbitration process. Well, the government shot back. First up was Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis, who had this to say about Mr. Ingram's intervention. In fact, he makes out the case as to why we should be cautious. He makes the case out as to why we need to, to be careful. He makes it out, but at the same time, he wants us to be reckless and irresponsible like him. This is a man who, maybe if he had sat down, analyzed, and listened, to some of the advisors, he'd be able to tell us, he might have been able to pro prevent it, the, what, the $100 million plus overrun that I'm trying to, the mess that he left with the road improvement program, if he had taken the time and be more sensible, be more prudent, right, and, and listen to his advisors, we may not have to, the country will, may, will not have been saddled with a $100 million, a $100 million uh, uh, possible death, cost, overrun cost on overruns on the road. Now, Prime Minister Christie also took ex exception to what he thought was a revisionist approach to investors by Mr. Ingram. The Prime Minister sharp or shared in the House of Assembly, that is, the changes made to the heads of agreement by the former Ingram administration between the government and the developers of Albany. In that deal, certain pledges agreed to by Albany were written out of the deal, a move the Prime Minister says made little sense. With Albany, we agreed that there would be certain social contributions made by Albany that Albany agreed to with the heads of agreement. One, that the beach between the Moscow home and the caves would be made into a first-class beach for Bahamians. Two, right, that 300 acres of land would be made available to the government for purchase at $50,000 an acre, specifically to create a township where young Bahamians who cannot afford to buy homes now but will have access to property to be able to do it. But I, I just read last night the letter where the England government read those things and saying, you don't have to do it. 